hard. <laughs> That's the only word I know really how to explain it. I've told a couple of friends it just seems so surreal. It, it seems like I'm watching it at some times happen to somebody else. The wife of an Orange County Sheriff's Corporal has been holding everything together as her husband battles the coronavirus. But Southeast Texas always pulls through. The Sheriff's Department and the community have stepped up for them in a really special way. 12 News reporter Amelia White shares their story. You only turn 12 once, and for Keenan Crochet, this is a birthday he'll never forget. And not because of a big party or presence, but the display of support from his community as his dad fights for his life. A caravan of supporters started in the Market Basket parking lot and didn't stop until they made it to one special 12 year old, Keegan Crochet. The days leading up to their birthdays, I'm doubting myself and thinking, oh my gosh, I just can't. Keegan's mom, Chantel Crochet, worried about planning her son's birthday this year alone. Her husband, Corporal Drew Crochet, is in the hospital in ICU battling COVID-19. The pressure of him being away from home and sick and not knowing what's going to happen with any of that um, and just my kids being disappointed. You never want that for your kids' birthdays. But Keegan's face says it all. A community birthday parade featuring trucks, gift cards, and a caring community turns the worry behind his eyes into a day filled with joy. I am blessed to be surrounded by so many people and so many members of our community that have reached out and touched our family in a time of need. I mean, it really speaks to Southern Texas living, I mean, honestly. But one special guest was missing, Keegan's dad, Corporal Crochet. Crochet's father, David, believes his son will pull through. He's a fighter, he's a real fighter, and if anybody can make it, he can, you know. And uh, I thank God every day for helping him this far. Till that time comes, this family will continue to lean on their community, living by these four simple words. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it is felt what you do. So, uh, I, uh, I, I can't, I, I can never repay or anything and everything they've done. And it doesn't stop it, and it doesn't stop at the birthday celebration tomorrow. The Orange community will host a link sale at the Orange County ESD number three. The benefit kicks off at 1030. All expenses will go to the crochet family live in Beaumont. Amelia White 12 News. Thanks so much, Amelia. Now some new information tonight on why some people had to wait so long to get their second vaccine shot in Hardin County today. Originally, only 400 people were scheduled to receive their second dose at the intermediate school on Friday. But after the school realized they wouldn't be able to use the Performing Arts Center next door for the weekend, someone mistakenly scheduled all of Saturday's appointments for today. That added more than 750 people to the list. Judge Wayne McDaniel said this isn't the only reason for the long lines. Quite a few people couldn't come over the past, uh, at least Monday through Thursday of this week. I think there's even some from last week that couldn't come on their regular day for their second shot. So they all showed up this morning. Now, Judge McDaniel called the situation a mess, but says they got through it despite a few people having to leave without getting their second shot. But our local hubs are still making major progress. So far, they've given out nearly 75,000 first doses, more than 21,000 of those in Jefferson County alone. And we want to make sure you have all of the information you need to be able to register if you want to take the vaccine. All you have to do is text the word SHOT to 409-838-1212. We have all of the info available if you want vaccines at one of the local hubs. There's also information on pharmacies that are providing shots. By the numbers, more shots and fewer cases. That is the theme across Southeast Texas as we end the week. So here's a snapshot. On Friday, our region added 78 new coronavirus cases to the tally. That's not including data from the Port Arthur Health Department. Now, the majority of these cases are out of Chambers County, 37. And take a look. Our 14-day average for cases, it continues to fall, which is exactly what we want to see. Now, as far as our hospitals, the patient count has been pretty steady for most of the week. In Jefferson County, 25% of the ICU patients have COVID. About 11% in general beds have the virus. Our regional hospitalization rate is 12.7%. And here's our big picture as we close out the week. This week, there were 73 fewer positive COVID cases, which was a 7% drop. And Saturday is shaping up to be 
pretty good day to go golfing or just to be outside. We're looking at dry and warm temperatures under some cloudy skies, but Sunday, mm, rains in the forecast. <laughs> Christiana Ramos joins us from the Storm Tracker Center, keeping track of your weekend. Yep, we do have a cold front that should be sweeping through on Sunday. So this is just a glance at what Sunday what to expect on Sunday. And we are going to see some pretty good round of showers that day, possible thunderstorm here and there towards the afternoon and then evening. It should start to clear out. We're looking about a quarter to half an inch of rainfall right now. We do see that warm front. It is just over our area. That's why we're seeing the uh, overcast, those mostly cloudy skies out there. And there is a dense fog advisory in effect for the triangle um, just because with those lower clouds and then you have that sea fog coming out of the coast as those winds are shifted off towards the south. Um, just make sure you are using your low beams tonight if you are out driving and in pretty humid conditions. Again, like I said, it's pulling in some pretty moist air, those southerly winds, and you can't expect that as we head into tomorrow and warm temperatures throughout tonight. Those low 70s, well, they're just dropping down a few more degrees and we will be in the upper 60s for those low temperatures. But hey, looks like we could be expecting below normal conditions on our long range forecast. We're going to talk about that later on. Today, a group of congressional Republicans and Democrats spend time along the Texas-Mexico border. They made stops at a Border Patrol holding facility and a refugee resettlement facility for unaccompanied minors. Anastasia Bolton was there for it all. Immigration, migration, the border, topics that inspire feelings. This is inhumane. Very strong opinions. This is a problem of their own making and ratchet up the blame game. President Biden ignored the advice of professionals. We have a crisis at the border. This administration, the Biden administration, the Biden administration, and the Biden administration have made decisions that are causing these people to suffer. Come on, this is it's a crisis. The Congressional Republicans Friday were very clear on how they felt yeah, here they come. about the situation in the Rio Grande Valley along this particular part of the okay, cool. Texas-Mexico border. They cannot get ahead of this flood of humanity without policy changes in Washington, D.C. Part of their tour was on the Rio Grande with the Texas Department of Public Safety and the Customs and Border Protection holding facility not far from Donna, Texas. Well, thank you for coming here. Uh, we need we need for media to show the truth. Rolando Rodriguez spent the morning outside of the Donna tent facility. We don't think it's right that what is behind us, all this construction here, is being made for illegal people. We're not against illegals. We love them. We love people. But um, I don't think it's right for them to come right now. Well, the numbers start rising uh, under President uh, Trump. Henry Cuellar is a Democratic congressman from this area. What worries me is this, is that March, April, May, June, July are the peak months traditionally. I saw this in 2014 under Obama. I saw this uh, 2019 uh, under President Trump. Uh, so I, I, I am uh, willing to work uh, with the administration in any way that they want to, and they, they need to listen to border communities. We've had immigration problems for years. Chris Cabrera is a longtime Border Patrol agent and is the vice president of the National Border Patrol Council. We need the Democrats and the Republicans to not only get along, but at least forget their Democrats and Republicans for, for the sake of these kids that are, that are suffering at the hands of politics. Developing tonight, investigators are looking for answers after identifying human remains that were found in a Port Arthur canal. Police say they belong to 24-year-old Cordell Marquise Evans, also known as Annalyn. Officials say Evans was a transient in Beaumont, mainly staying around College Street and 4th Street. But the remains were found last week on the 3700 block of Savannah Avenue near the Motiva property. Port Arthur investigators are asking the community to come forward with any info about Evans, like where, where Evans may have last been seen. If you have information, please call Crime Stoppers at 833-TIPS. 
Right now, a man and a woman from Orange are facing charges after trafficking a 14-year-old girl. The Lake Charles team was reported as a runaway in early February. After digging through social media, investigators found out the team made arrangements to be brought to Texas to engage in sexual activity. The team was moved across the state to Austin, Houston and Beaumont. On February 23rd, detectives found the teen at an apartment complex in Houston with another juvenile. Earlier this month, Kevondrick Fazia and Kalista Winfrey were arrested in Beaumont and extradited to Calcasieu Parish. No bond for Fazia. Winfrey has a bond of $250,000. Officials in Orange are trying to figure out the cause of an early morning fire at Rogers Lumber Company. It started around 3 in the morning. The blaze destroyed the business off Old Highway 90. The family that runs the sawmill tells 12 News that there was some welding going on at the facility yesterday, but aren't sure if that's what caused the fire. They say they're now focusing on cleaning up and trying to salvage what they can. Fortunately, no one was hurt. In case you missed it, a man is facing charges after Houston police say he climbed more than 50 stories up a construction crane overnight. He even moved the crane before crews cut the power off. The man was finally rescued by SWAT members after hours. Police say he may have been under the influence of drugs and apparently told them he didn't know how he got up there. Beloved children's author Beverly Cleary has passed away. Some of Cleary's best known works are the Ramona series. For her lifetime contributions to American literature, Cleary was recognized as a Library of Congress living legend. She was 104 years old. New developments, the Texas Workforce Commission released new unemployment numbers today. More than 27,000 Texans lost non-agricultural jobs in February. 23,000 lost jobs in the professional and business services. The unemployment rate for the Beaumont Port Arthur area hasn't changed much for this year. January's unemployment rate was 11.6%. The next month, it bumped up to 11.8. Both numbers still a major increase from where we were a year ago. Last February, our unemployment employment was 5.4%.